Welcome to Rich Crest Talk, your host Paul Vanderwerf. Uh, tonight's guest, uh, all the way from Kern Valley, Jake Rudnick, who's uh, kind of wearing many hats, farmer, activist, educator. Uh, Jake, why don't you introduce yourself, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, Jake Rudnick, I'm living in the Kern River Valley in Weldon and Onyx, farming in those locations at several different farms. I work at the school uh, as a substitute teacher and after school program worker and I'm the president of the Kern Valley Growers Association where we uh, hold the Lakeshore Farmers Market and the Onyx Farmers Market. All right, and for people who don't know, uh, Kern Valley is just uh, west of us. It's the quickest place you can get to the mountains up to Walker's Pass, 178 west through Inyo Kern and then right up through Walker's Pass you come into Kern Valley. Uh, Onyx Farmers Market is just that right turn. What's the name of that road? Doyle Ranch Road. It's uh, right after the town of Onyx and just before the old Onyx store. Right. So as you're as you're coming in, we all see the historic Onyx store on the left and the road just before that on the right, Doyle Ranch Road. And you typically have this huge sign out there that's like a four by eight uh, poster board there. Yeah, it's plywood and um, yellow and red. When it's up, we're open. Right. So if you see that sign as you're coming through the valley, you, and you have time, that's when you can pull over. And you don't see the farmer's market from the road. You just take that little turn on the road, and then it's right on the right. kind of sneaks up on you. Yeah, we've had a lot of people from Ridgecrest enjoy it on the weekend because we have a lot of trees. We have a lot of water. It's nice and cool in there. It's not like Ridgecrest in the summer. Right. And I remember the first time I brought my, my nine-year-old daughter. Uh, y as you park, you kind of walk up to it. There's a little pond there at the start. And I recorded that uh, moment, and she kind of walked up, and her eyes were wide, and she just went, wow, because being from Ridgecrest, we're not used to seeing the green and the water and just all the uh, uh, rural uh, farming-type environment that you have up in the Kern Valley. Uh, and then you'd also mention another uh, farmer's market, which was Lakeshore. And where's that? Yeah, Onyx has only been operating its second year, and Lakeshore is in its fourth year, I believe. And we're, the Lakeshore Market is Saturdays 9 to 1 over in Wolford Heights, just on the edge of Wolford Heights on your way to Kernville. Right. And, uh, and another thing is, say, educator, you're working as a substitute teacher and helping the schools. Um, and I've done that a little bit. You, you get your, at least a bachelor's degree and you pass the uh, exam, the CBEST exam, and then you go ahead and get on the list. And, and that's a great way to get in and work with the kids. And what is your education as far as going to college? How, what did you study? I graduated Kern Valley in 98, 98, and then I went to UC Davis the following fall for four years, and I got my BS in Agricultural Systems and Environment, specialized for agriculture education. All right, so that's actually, to be in the schools is right up your alley as far as your education goes as well. Yeah. All right, now, um, there's just so many things that you're doing over there. Uh, the farmers markets have a history, and and I guess the Owen or the I say Owens Valley. I was just up at uh, Independence on Friday talking to the folks up there that have really been um, working hard to get the Owens Valley Growers Association going. You have the Kern Valley Growers Association, and and why don't you talk a little bit more about the history of the Kern Valley Growers Association, and what you're doing with with that group? Well, we've been uh, we've been an association for about four years. Um, We've received a USDA a, uh, Agricultural Marketing Services grant once, and we're going to be applying for that again in June of 2015 so that we can open a Ridgecrest market and bolster our Onyx and Lakeshore markets and also get some programming into the school cafeterias about healthy eating. Um, we don't really do anything else other than the farmer's market at the moment. It takes up all of our resources. Um, but we do have a baker, myself as a, a certified local grower. We have a reseller of organic food, uh, Cal Organic, and various other fair trade items that are like coffee or cacao. And we have um, a lady who does photography from Ridgecrest. We have uh, a guy who does cutlery, another lady who does knitting of hats, another lady does dog sweaters. We have all different kinds of craft vendors that come and go uh, fairly regularly. We also have live music almost every Saturday. Anywhere from one guy on a on a acoustic guitar to a whole band of four people. 
Right. So really, when you talk about uh, community garden, it's about the community. When you talk about farmer's market, it's about the community as well. So you have live music. Um, I think at Lakeshore you have uh, a book swap. People can bring a book, yeah. drop off a book. We have a book up. swap too. Yeah, I mean, a customer's not going to go to a farmer's market just to buy food. They can go to the big grocery store, buy food and toiletries and dinner for the night that's already cooked. It, we're not as convenient and we don't have the multitude of items so we have to augment with the music and the crafters stuff that you can't find at a grocery store right makes it a social experience people are having fun yeah depending on the band people come and sit for a half an hour um, on certain weekends we'll have a raffle so it encourage encourages people to stay we've had uh, a masseuse with a chair and we're, we're working on that again um, we've had face painting, we've had the hot dog uh, guy selling hot dogs and whatever for a lunchtime snack. Um, we have a, a pergola with um, chairs underneath it, so in the sun, uh, during the summer you can sit out there and enjoy what you just bought it from the baker. Right, and, and, and a lot of people always kind of wonder, or they're confused here in Ridgecrest, that we don't have a farmer's market. We used to have one over by the triangle, over by the front gate. And we have farmers markets that are connected uh, north of us, Mammoth, Bishop, Independence, uh, Lone Pine. And then we also have farmers markets to the west of us, uh, Wolford Heights, which is the lakeshore, and then Onyx, which is really the closest one. It's, what, what is that, maybe 40 miles from here? Yeah, it's a good 45 minute drive. Um, most Ridgecrest folks stop by on their way back to Ridgecrest in the afternoon after enjoying the lake or the river. Right, and then actually, uh, uh, one of our uh, guys that we had on the TV show that I've stayed in touch with over years is the Tomato Man, Scott Shacklett. And I remember telling Scott, hey, you got to meet Jake and some of the things he's doing over there. And telling you, Jake, you got to meet Scott because he's, he's kind of our, our uh, local guy here in Nino Kern. He's growing now. Uh, you, you've got, had a chance to meet Scott and, and do some produce with him? I have sold on the boulevard with Scott a few times. And we're actually communicating and working on getting the paperwork taken care of for the state and county so that... I can bring some of his tomatoes that are really awesome over to our community. Yeah, there is a reason they call him the tomato man. He, he says yes. it's because all his boxes are empty. That's how you can tell they're good. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and go to a break here for commercial. Paul Vanderwerf talking farmer's market with uh, Jake Rudnick out of the Kern Valley Growers Association over in Onyx. And we're going to have a lot more things to talk about right after this. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jake, for coming. We'll be right back. Malakalikimaka is a thing to say on a bright Hawaiian Christmas day. That's the island greeting that we send. And welcome back to Ridgecrest Talk. Your host, Paul Vanderwerf. Uh, we're uh, Enjoying the outdoors, even here in December, uh, we haven't had a real strong freeze yet. Jake, have you had a freeze up where you are yet? Our winter started out very late, and it's been very mild. We have had a few killing frosts uh, that have wiped out the frost-sensitive stuff like squashes. Um, but I still have some amaranth growing underneath a pine tree that haven't been killed. So we've gotten just enough to kill summer stuff, but we've been very mild at about 32, 33 at night with a lot of moisture, so that uh, adds an, a layer of insulation. Right, and, and for those of you who haven't been gardening, that probably only happens like one out of 10 years on average. It's, it's not very often. Yeah, it's been a mild last two, three weeks, and we've had a lot of cloud cover, and the mushrooms are growing on the trees in the forest. Um, I've yet to find any, but my friend has found quite a few. Now, you have a, you know, actually an interesting background. I know you had been in Israel for a while. You'd worked in San Diego. Why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the stuff you did in San Diego when you were working down there? Well, I got a job working with uh, a subcontractor for the San Diego Gas and Electric Company. And I was an auditing arborist, which meant I would go around and check out all the tree work that was done under and around the power lines. So I was in people's backyards knocking on their doors, and I was out in the country hiking up the hills wherever the power lines were. I stayed there seven months and then I got a job as a sales manager for a wholesale uh, nursery that grows indoor plants. Anywhere from cyclamens that you see at the grocery store to um, Rex begonias that are famous for their colored leaves 
Uh, and then one of the big projects that I worked on was the carnivorous plant collections, uh, namely the Venus flytrap. Instead of harvesting from the wild, which exists only in North Carolina in about 10 square miles, we actually, our genetics are tissue culture to multiply. And then we grow them in the greenhouse so we don't harm nature by taking and taking. Um, I worked with them for two years, a little over two years, and we got our Venus flytraps into Kmart, Ace Hardware, True Value, a lot of name brand places. We also sold them online at plantsforkids.com, and you can still buy them there. Right. Yeah, I haven't seen a Venus flytrap since I worked with the kids up in Sonoma County, and I remember hunting down a greenhouse up in that area and just to, to find some because they were still pretty rare. They're, they're guess, very they're easy to kill, to yeah. The owner has spent years researching the plastic box that he sells them, ships them in, and he says just dunk it in distilled water and it will keep itself alive. Don't add anything to it. Don't take it out. Right, <laughs> or else you're asking for it. Yeah. Now you got some other projects. Uh, you mentioned one, woofing, which uh, most yeah. of us wouldn't know what that is. I think I'd read some on the internet, but why don't you explain what that process is. WOOF is, stands for a Worldwide Organization of Organic Farms and in the 70s it was started by a British woman who wanted to get out for the weekend of the big city and go to the farm of her childhood type thing and experience it and be like a weekend warrior. And so it's morphed into many countries around the world, U.S. being one of them. I signed up about a month ago and I now have two people staying at my place. I house them and feed them and then during the day we work together four to six hours and they learn about how I farm, how I want to farm, what my goals are. And some of them may have no farming experience and some of them may have a lot. One in particular, his name is Dan and he spent three years in Central Africa and Zambia working with the Zambians in their, in their farming communities. Um, but he still has a lot to learn because our climate up in the Kern River Valley is very different from Zambia and the soil is very different. Um, the other guy has very little experience. His father and mother are horseshoers uh, from Minnesota, so he doesn't really have much farming experience, so he's very happy to learn. Right, it seems like a real match. I remember looking years back that you, if you had to travel cheaply like a, a college student during the summer, that you could find these places to stay that were real cheap as far as the cost, but now we're tying into people that want to make a difference, get into ag more, learn about growing and, and making a difference and now they're able to travel the world or go to different places and you've actually had a couple people just in the short term short time that you've been doing it already up there help and and, and they're able to help probably quite a bit right oh yeah they help immensely I also have uh, a French couple that flew into San Francisco they're biking down to me right now and in June January they'll arrive and then in the end of they'll be there for maybe three weeks and then they'll continue their bike tour of the U.S. And then I have another French couple already scheduled for the end of February for a few weeks. Right, and then that's the whole key that, that people um, don't always realize what a big deal it is, is, is we get these European tourists that go to Death Valley and then they swing back through up to the Bay Area, uh, Yosemite on the way, and you guys are right there. I remember being in Lake Isabella, I met an Australian couple and a French couple there. And are you seeing those people showing up uh, at the farmer's market and so forth? Well, yeah, as far as wolfing is concerned, I'm the only farm on that connecting route of 178. So it's really great for the tourist woofer. And at the Onyx Farmer's Market, and during the summer, we're open seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. So basically sun up to sundown, we get all the tourists that's, that come by and see our sign and venture in. They know that a farmer's market in California doesn't use genetically modified organisms. They know that we don't use harmful chemicals. So they feel very safe, like they, can get, like they get their food in Europe. Because it's labeled back there and it's not labeled here. And um, they want to meet the locals. We've had people from Louisiana or Florida stop in. But we've had, every week we've had somebody from Europe during the summer for five months straight. And that's, and that's either just from being on the internet that they find you with woofing or they're actually just driving right by on 178 and they see that big sign. Well, at the market, it's just been the sign on the road. The woofing is very new. It's only a, mo a month old to me. Um, but it, it has a lot of promise and I've already reaped a lot of benefits from it. I took the two woofers on Thursday. This, the school where I work, they had their Christmas dinner. 
and the cafeteria lady needed extra hands to serve. So I said, hey, can my two guys come up and help and eat for free? Because that's her policy. So they said, sure. So they came up and they were really interested to learn how the, what kind of food was served. Of course, Christmas dinner was a bit skewed from the normal day. And um, got to interact with the kids. That was really nice. The kids are fascinated to see new people. Um, and I've also sold the kids apples, too. Now, what, what's uh, with the schools? Are you getting, besides just being a substitute to your teacher, are you actually able to, to talk about agriculture with the kids? Yeah, the after-school program where I work Monday through Friday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., um, we have a little school garden that the, head, the teacher in charge of it has allowed me to use. And in the spring, we have programming lined up to put plants in and start growing. Yeah, I was, I was actually amazed at that, that a, year, a year ago, October, uh, someone had talked about seed tape, and I thought seed tape won't work. This is just for kids, but boy, I had the best radishes. We're going to talk some more about some of this great gardening. We're getting ready to go to break. Paul Vanderwerf hosting Rich Crest Talk. We'll be right back. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost nipping. And we're back with our last segment of uh, Talking Rich Crest Talk on this uh, Monday night gardening with uh, Jake Rudnick from Kern Valley. And Jake, you're, you're into a lot of different things. That's, that's something that um, people accuse me of sometimes. And, and it's really good to see that you're so involved with the community there. It's a very rural area. The U.S. Department of Agriculture, the USDA, is, is very involved with helping uh, ag in those areas. I remember looking uh, for this area uh, out of Lancaster, Palmdale area, they were touting the best way to grow is with high tunnels. And for those of us that aren't familiar with high tunnels, they're basically large Quonset huts with a, a covering of, of plastic or some, some similar material that allows the sun to come through it. And uh, I did get a chance to visit your high tunnel and your, your uh, space there at, in Onyx. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the history of that and what you're able to do with a high tunnel? Right, yeah, the high tunnel is meant to extend your season, not grow year-round. And right now I have kale and Swiss chard predominantly in there, coming out very nicely because there's no W-I-N-D, which people at Vergecrest are very familiar with. And um, keeps it just warm enough to keep growing and not just sit there because it's too cold. Keeps it nice and humid. Um, I start my seedlings in there, and then I put them out in the field as well. And I'm the first one to receive the grant and put the high tunnel up on, on the property. And it's over 3,000 feet. It's 30 feet wide, a little over 100 feet long. And I'm hopefully even going to try bananas in it. Right. So it allows you to actually grow, grow different crops, but it also allows you to extend your season. Yes. And I, I think when you were there, you actually had trays of seedlings that uh, other... Uh, do-it-yourself gardeners at home could come in and, and buy some some small seedlings of different plants that they could get a head start to grow those at home. Right. It's you know sometimes my seed flats have 288 uh, seedlings in them. That's the way they're designed. And sometimes I only need 200, not 288. So I give away or I sell for pennies um, to my friends and other farmers. Um, and you can see pictures of it online on Facebook. We have the Onyx Farmers Market which is at our farm. My personal far, uh, company is Onyx Family Farms, which is also Facebooking. And uh, we take weekly pictures and post them so you don't even have to show up. But if you do, we also give tours for free. Right, and, and one of the big things as far as regionally uh, in this area, uh, going from Barstow up to Reno, is the Digital 395 Project, which ran the fiber optic cable. And unfortunately, that hasn't been extended to Kern Valley yet. But uh, what, one of the great things that that does is it gets just all these small communities in the digital age, instead of having to drive up there to see what you have, we can now just get on the computer, get on your Facebook, and if it's not posted by you on there, we can actually ask you questions on there, and you can, what, Yeah, you can a send me a private message. Back. And um, where I personally live, I don't get cell phone reception, but at the high tunnel and at the markets, I get cell phone reception, so I hop on my Facebook and I put a picture up, I tell you what's selling at the market and I answer your questions. 
Um, our farmer's market in Onyx is open this coming weekend and the next weekend. However, the Lakeshore market is closed. So we're the only farmer's market for quite a while. So Lakeshore is going to close for the holidays. Yes, yeah, close for the holidays. But Onyx is open, and we also have oh, more than a half a dozen ducks quacking around. And we have uh, a white duck and an African goose, or I mean a white goose and an African goose. Um, we get rescue animals here and there. We have plenty of birds that are eating out of the bird feeders. We have koi and goldfish in the pond. We have a giant African sulcata tortoise that somebody, uh, some rescue in, in Ukraine gave us two years ago, and he's about 75 pounds. We have baby goat, or we have goats, and right now um, they're slotted to uh, kid and have babies in May, so that'll be a great attraction. Um, of course, we have all kinds of chickens to see, and we're going to be increasing our chicken flock to about 200 birds so that we can meet the demand or come close to meeting the demand of fresh eggs. Right, and that's, that's a big challenge is, is getting enough eggs. And, and with gas prices coming down, I mean, I'm sure all the college kids are driving home for, for the holidays, but gas, can't, what, what could be cheaper than drive up to Kern Valley from here as far as these low gas prices? Um, what, what's the difference in the wintertime and the summertime as farmers, the Onyx Farmers Market? You have different days that you're open, different hours? Yeah, the, the 2014 was our second summer being open seven days a week, basically, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. At the end of October, we shut that off, and, we op and this winter is our first winter to be open. Only Saturdays and Sundays, 9 to 4. So basically, while the sun's shining, um, and we have a little fire there, you can get warm. You can drive right up. We're happy to serve you right out of your car. If you don't want to get out or it's windy or it's raining, but we're open. Right, so basically any weekend, if it's a Saturday or Sunday, during the daylight hours, 9 to 4, we can stop on our way through wherever we're going. Yeah. And then uh, for those people that are traveling through the Central Valley, we're used to going through Tehachapi, but we can also go through Kern Valley and still come out into Bakersfield or even um, some of the other routes. Uh, now, what about the Lakeshore Market? Even though it's closed this next two weeks, when is that normally open? Saturdays, 9 to 1, year-round. So it's generally yeah. every Saturday from 9 to 1. There's a select number of weekends that we close for major holidays uh, on the regular calendar or for our valley-specific. At Onyx, we have a rock vendor that's got all kinds of jewelry and rock items. He also sells jams and jellies, all different kinds. And we also have local honey. We have a great selection of winter squashes and pie pumpkins that are just really good to eat. And especially if you're a vegetarian, they're a great meat substitute. And we also have fresh greens coming out of the high tunnel. We have frozen goat cheese from Soledad Goats down in Mojave. So we have quite a few things to choose from. Right. And I, I remember going there and, and uh, I, I think it was even some of the honey and different things that were there. Um, so we, we can go onto Facebook and we can double check that. We can even check uh, if we have certain questions. Uh, what about the people who aren't on the computer? They're pers pretty much going to have to drive out there, or do you guys advertise other media? Uh, we don't advertise other media right now. Um, my phone number is listed online on Facebook, so people can call me if need be. And so that's easy to get a, get a hold of. We, we have a lady and her family come from Trona. She called me every day until we had tomatoes. And when I said, yes, we have tomatoes, she made the drive out that weekend. Right. And, of course, we always have people who are interested in helping out. So if they contact you and say, hey, we'd like to come out and volunteer, can you find a place for them to work? Yeah, and we sometimes have work days. Like I have a 200-tree peach orchard that needs to be pruned. All right. I have We're going to go ahead and have to cut it off. we got so much to talk about. We're just out of time, Jake. Thanks for coming. Thank you. If you want to get involved, you need to get a hold of this guy, Jake Rudnick in Kern Valley. And, Jake, just thanks so much for coming in. Thank you, Paul.